Hi everyone, I'm here with a brand new video. I really miss researching things and talking about it. In fact, you know what came to my mind? We are not able to do actions such as reading and writing in our daily lives because our lives are full of various preoccupations. In fact, it's an incredibly important thing to recognize and describe our life and what we feel. It collects our minds, which are like a beehive. I'm sure many of you suffer from this situation. There are so many thoughts in the head, they don't stop. Psychologists, for example, are always talking about how writing is good for you. Your vocabulary develops as you read and you become more profound as you write. You build a healthier, more solid relationship with the people around you. That's the importance of reading books. Even if you can't read books, I think listening to podcasts, following the agenda to see what people think and talk about or watching channels that review films also gives people a background. You have a curiosity about life. When that happens, you don't get bored. Think of the people who go to cosplay. There is such an archive in their head and they enjoy life so much. In life, the outfit I'm wearing is the iconic outfit of the period when Avatar Aang pretended to be dead and lived secretly in the Fire Nation and the bandana on my head suits me very well. I think I'll wear it in my daily life. <laughs> Decent troubles, I mean. Anyway, there are many people around me who say I'm bored. I look at their lives. Their only hobbies are going out and hanging out with their friends. When their friends are not available, they get depressed. They can't find anything to do. They feel empty. You have no choice but to watch Instagram Reels. Obviously, I think it's due to apathy. If you or someone around you is whining like this, I think the prescription is definitely interest. Interest in the environment, interest in the world, interest in life. Without this, you just fill your days. You just live like a weed. It doesn't mean anything. By the way, whether it has to have meaning is also debatable. I'm not saying let's make our lives meaningful quickly. Get up and read a book. I think we need a little sympathy from within. Maybe it's something innate, I don't know. Honestly, I've been like this for as long as I can remember. I feel a sense of excitement within me. I have a desire to explore, to learn and I feel sympathy. I'm extremely curious about the world, people and experiences and I want to engage with them. I recommend it to you as well. Life becomes more bearable that way. This may sound condescending. I read books to improve myself while you just sleep all day. Oh look at you, being a total couch potato. <laughs> if you're happy with that, then so be it. I can't interfere. I'm just talking about how these people who don't know what to do when they get bored. I'm just mentioning a few things about that. That's all I've been talking about. Don't get me wrong, okay? What really annoys me is the judgmental attitude of people who are obsessed with personal development because they look down on those who are not super productive or super knowledgeable. Oh, it would be better if you were like that too, but come on. That's just a narrow-minded perspective. You can't call me lucky if I wake up and start working at 5 a.m. Stop wasting your life and get off your laser butt, you big slob. It's hilarious when people make comments like, if you are not going to the gym, you're a loser. It's definitely not that. I'm just praising and recommending this because life can be enjoyed in a different way. It's like those people in movies who are miserable and then start enjoying life when they discover something new. Because there are so many treasures in life. It's a bit eccentricity, I think. Things that people make up so they don't get bored. I'm talking about adding nuance to life. Otherwise, just eating, mating and sleeping will be enough. The rest are completely fabricated concepts, artificially created objects. 
art is like that, science is like that, philosophy is like that. It's all about humans trying to feel their free time. Today, I want to tell you a lot of things related to this topic as well because this free time puts a huge burden on the person's shoulders. Imagine a moment when you are so bored and you say to your friends, Oh, please, let's do something. Should we grab a bite to eat? Should we go to the movies? Oh, I'm so fed up. Enough. Think about those moments. It's that vibe. Humanity starts expressing itself with that vibe, creating art moments, making inventions, wanting to govern people, wanting to be an authority, questioning and so on. It's the essence of life. I will approach this topic through the lens of today's favorite subject, the consumer society. This video will be divided into two parts because I read and research like crazy, you know? Then I try to condense them into our generation's attention span, skipping many details. That's why I divided the topics I will talk about and split them into two. Let me tell you the research topics now. Let's see if I can't find a word that excites you. American capitalism, the 1950s, American suburban life, suburban homes, the American dream. These will be the topics of the second video, by the way. I split the most exciting topics into two parts. I created a climax. In this video, I will talk about the conditions that prepared these topics. I will start with the age of discovery, but gradually, I will only tell the most entertaining parts. No history or geography knowledge required. You will listen as if you are having a casual conversation. Because we didn't listen to these things in class. Because of that, I will explain the essence bring you closer to life with the details that excite and engage me. Because I will bridge the gap between the age of discovery and not posting a photo on Instagram without effects. And that bridge will be the consumer society. Well, this consumer society is formed by capitalism, which is formed by trade, which is made tangible by the age of discovery and the industrial revolution. Anyway, the developments that shape our lives today. But why? Why did it happen that way? I will explain these things. In short, in this video, I will talk about the discovery of America, the colonization process, the transition from feudalism to new cities and the industrial revolution. I talk about them in every video because they are so important. Memorize them already. Is it going super exciting? <laughs> Wait, never mind. Let's get started then. In the 1500s, there was no Walmart or Amazon. What I mean is that concepts like mass production and target audience didn't exist. It was mostly nobles, peasants who worked for them, and slaves. Land was abundant, but labor was limited. Think of it like blocks and castles. The noble living in the castle, whether a lord or a king, had their subjects. These were the peasants and the traders who depended on their land. Everyone produced enough for themselves and for the nobles' needs. Labor was forced and dependent. If you were a peasant, you worked until the end of your life, working for whoever owned the land you cultivated just to have enough to eat. You only fulfilled your basic needs, and household chores were done by women with slaves and peasants. This was a traditional world. Subsistence economy, you know. There was no concept of excess production or very little of it. Only seafaring tribes engaged in trade, but it was limited. The majority of people were self-sufficient. Furthermore, after the invention of money and up until the present day, there was no such thing as market value as we know it now. The maximum profit that could be obtained from a product was limited. Fair pricing practices were in place. Things changed when new products and resources were discovered. Sugar, for example. When the nobles tasted it, their demand increased. Sugar became significant because it formed the component of consumerism. In fact, sugar became the world's first mass-consumed product. Moreover, it was an unnecessary food, yet there was demand. This is where capitalism, trade and such come into play. Daily needs were no longer enough. 
These were the bygone eras. In the early 1600s, there was a wave of migration from Europe to America. Some people, even the misfits and troublemakers, when they had enough, just pack up and leave. They believed they could start a completely new life. Um, well, I don't know, but when I approached the people of that era with today's perspective and empathy, I envisioned such scenes. It's as if they were saying, mm, another life is possible. Oh, <laughs> I'm looking so, I'm looking at it so innocently, but you know, they went there and killed the Native Americans. Damn, the whites. By the way, I'm talking about the 17th century, but America was discovered and visited long before that. I'm talking about the most fancy primetime periods. Oh, by the way, watch Interview with a Vampire, oh, my favorite film. <sighs> See the grandeur, the splendor, and there are the foundations of suburban homes. Wooden detached houses. You can also see them in movies about witches, Salem, etc. Because those stories belong to that era. Can you picture it in your mind? These wooden houses were quickly built by the first settlers looking for a place to settle and they eventually paved the way for the suburban culture that we used to say. Culture that we used to say, wow, how did the Americans live? With a house and a yard, golden retriever, how nice. What I've been talking about is the prime time, but the early European settlers didn't adapt immediately. Some died of diseases, it took time to adapt to climate conditions there. The continent was discovered in the 15,000s, but it was not until a hundred years later that the influx began. The voyage of the Spanish explorer Christopher Columbus between 1492 and 250,000 laid a foundation for the subsequent colonization. Anyway, the European settlers who reached the continent saw that it was rich in natural resources. Whale oil, timber, rice, tobacco, sugar cane for instance. When they brought it back to Europe, the nobles demanded more after tasting it. Then there's cotton which is used for making clothes and fashion. They brought black slaves from Africa to work the cotton fields. That's when the balls started rolling. Trade networks were established and ships sailed from North America to Europe. The colonies were established on the east coast of North America. That's the part of facing Europe. The English, Spanish and French established colonies there. Those are the most spoken languages on the continent. There is no such thing as being American. In Canada, they speak French and English and right below in Mexico where they speak Spanish. There is a significant Spanish population in America. Now, let's move on to Europe. Between 1650 and 1780 it was a period of the rise of European bourgeoisie. What does that mean? They wanted to increase property and wealth ownership. It was no longer about being self-sufficient. Merchants and shopkeepers felt superior to unskilled workers and peasants. And a new way of life, the life of a consumer, was taking shape. Luxury goods were now available in stores. With the discovery of new continents, wealth was brought to Europe. Previously, a country's wealth was measured by the gold and silver it possessed, but now it was being sold expensively outside the country. This idea enriched Spain, England, Portugal and the Netherlands. Trade capitalism was born. New products and experiences necessitate the industrial revolution because demand increased, require more labor and find ways to produce more goods in less time. The industrial revolution also added crowds to this newly formed city mentality. After the industrial revolution in 1760 with the rise of capitalism, Consumption became a crucial factor affecting individuals and society. I will continue talking about this in the second video. 
Look forward to it because it will be amazing. Trust me. I make incredible connection and you'll be blown away. I will take you to 1950s America. Talk about Hitler and Freud. It's the prime era with cigarette advertisements and iconic Coca-Cola posters. Well, see you later.